Hello, this is the Impact Lounge. I'm Adam, your host for the Adam and Rose Show. Hope you all enjoyed last week's show. And uh, although it's only been up a few days at the time of recording, uh, we've had some great feedback, which Ro will go into in a second. But before we do that, this is your first time stopping by. Please do make sure to hit the subscribe and to leave us your comments in the, the YouTube section below. Now, uh, when we say also leave your comments, we also mean give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. We just want to get some interaction with, with you loungers, as uh, we are now referring to you as. On that note, also make sure to check out the great content on the channel. Uh, we have Trent and Carl doing an excellent job on the Impact Review, so make sure you check out those shows. And I think BQ is going to start dropping some some more content as well. Uh, just coming up in the next few weeks, we're, we'd like to have a few more interviews lined up. I think uh, I've got something with Sammy Callahan, a one-on-one with Sammy Callahan. So keep peel to the channel for that. We did interview Brian Cage this week, but unfortunately, uh, it seemed at the time that um, although his answers were very good, the actual audio wasn't very good. So that is not going to be going up on the channel, but uh, you never know, it might pop up somewhere else. Yes, for some reason, Brian Cage decided he wanted to do his dishes and eat whilst talking to me. So uh, although it was a fun interview, you guys are never going to hear that, but maybe we'll do it as a special somewhere else uh, along the way. I'll cut out some sound bites. Anyway, we don't want to talk about things you can't hear. We want to talk about the things that you can hear. So what are you going to hear on today's show? Well, we're going to very quickly go over some of the comments that you've talked about last on, about last week's. But then we dive into some of the news stories that are happening uh, in Impact this week. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And we also set you a trivia question. So uh, I suppose the best way to start is, is to get the answer to last week. So Ro... Uh, let us, let us know the answer. I think a few got it. <laughs> More than a few. The answer was indeed Eddie Edwards, and the first person to get it right, right was a Willow Rush. Um, just quickly, he's the only person, I think, currently on the roster to hold the X Division uh, tag and world championship, as well as uh, he... Uh, his, his maneuvers are the Die Hard and uh, the Boston Knee Party. So uh, congratulations to Willow Rush and everyone else who got it right. And uh, f for, for the guys who like to do this each and every week, hopefully you don't tune out after the trivia question. You do stay on and listen to the rest of the show. But uh, we always do give you that trivia question. So this week it's my one. And yeah, I mean, most people have got a chance of getting this right this week. Uh, because obviously, well, I'll, I'll just throw the question and I'll let you answer. So uh, for the Hardy family, who has got the best win percentage? on impact wrestling now i don't want you to take into account wwe matches anything that they might have done in amiga wrestling or anything like that we just want to know who's got the biggest win uh percentage on impact wrestling and tna obviously okay so drop your questions below and we'll take it from there right uh so the comments this week most of them were centered around uh, last week's show which was talking about the pwi 100 top female wrestlers was there any gems in there you want to pull out um, just the common theme was about the top PWI 100 uh, women. And uh, a lot of people were in agreement with us as far as saying that it's criminal that Tessa's not even in the top 10, let alone top 5. And, you know, my thing is just, it's opinion. And I, I don't have the name with me, but one person pointed out they think that it's bias against WWE and Japan wrestlers and we had mentioned that that the top five that's all it consists of um i just look at it like this and i would tell anybody it's all opinion i mean i think when you're it's just like when you're talking about lists that consist of best wrestlers of all time i mean there might be one or two that are kind of in everybody's top 10 but as far as the top five it's gonna vary it just depends what you like and you know what defines the best to you so um but i, I think we can all agree as wrestling fans universally tess is in the top 10 i mean i believe top five but she's in the top 10 and the fact that she wasn't listed is just asinine no, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, if you didn't check out last week's show, make sure you go back and listen to it. It did go up quite late this week. Apologies about that. That was partly my fault, uh, as, as, as well as BQ. Obviously, everyone has their own life. But, uh, yeah, that was my fault because we were obviously trying to get this Brian Cage interview up as well. So that did delay things a few uh, a little bit. So hopefully this week's show will go up uh, a little bit earlier. And uh, just make sure you keep on commenting. So um, in the news this week, there, there was three things in particular we were going to cover today. Two of them we've done specials on before, but I do think that they're worth 
just giving a bit of an update on uh, and uh, letting you co- you guys comment if you want to. I say guys, guys and girls. Hopefully we've got some female listeners as well. Um, so, yeah, so the first one is, is the continuing saga of Austin Aries and what's going on there. So I just really wanted to, to give you two updates on this. The first one is is his social media. Now, we talk all the time about you guys going on social media and helping us try and get Billy Corgan on. Uh, that's still going on, by the way. Make sure you hashtag Billy Corgan in. So it's at Billy. I think that's that's his Twitter handle. And we want the hashtag get Billy on. Uh, if you follow either myself or Ro, you'll see us talking about it on ours. So make sure you retweet that so they see it as well. Uh, my hashtag is... Uh, V2 Adam IL and Rose is RT underscore the great or RT the great underscore. What was it, Ro? I've screwed that one up. RT great underscore. Uh, I was nearly right. Nearly right. Um, so, yes, yeah, so make sure you follow us on Twitter. But Austin Aries, back to him. What's he been saying on Twitter? Well, basically, he hasn't been saying very much, but he has been continually trolling um, the internet community. And the way he's been doing that is by anyone who's made a, a bad or negative comment about them, he's gone onto their social media, found an unflattering picture, and then retweeted it with the quote over the top, uh, including some, obviously, the, the, the quote and some unflattering images. It's very, very funny. He's done it to Jim Cornette. He's done it to a few people uh, a, a, along the way, but he's also doing it to just regular Joes. So if you haven't seen it, I really would recommend that you you do go and uh, check it out because uh, what what he's doing is it's something I've never seen a wrestler do before I think it's uh, Austin Aries pissed me off is the is the hashtag so so make sure you check that out now uh, on top of that during this week's press pass which is uh, the teleconference that that the impact wrestlers do with the media they were asked about Austin Aries <clears throat> and Johnny Impact said that they weren't supposed to talk about him which makes the conspiracy theory that this is a, a work go a bit deeper. Um, did you did you have any th- further thoughts on this? I just don't care personally, man. I mean, it just, I don't know. I, I'm just at the point with Impact when they do certain things. And this has been a great year for the company. But sometimes I think they do things and it doesn't really move the needle. And, you know, we're weeks now postbound for glory with, with this. Like, I just... I just find myself not caring and listeners go ahead and share your thoughts. I mean, I know some people are on board with it and that's cool, but just myself, I, I just don't care at this point. Uh, just, just on that, pick you up on a few things. First of all, share your thoughts, not, not only on whether you think it's a work or a shoot, but also what you think Austin Aries is doing on social media. Because as I said, you just go onto his Twitter hand, uh, Twitter feed and it's hilarious. I, I really, really find it funny. Some people might find it sad, pathetic, whatever you want to describe it. But to me, it's it's tickling me. Every time I see it, I, I'm just finding it very, very funny. So let us know what your thoughts on that. Do you think he should be doing that? Does this play into the fact that it's a work? The other thing you said there was, does it move the needle? And that, that leads us into the second story that we talk a lot about, which is ratings, TV channels, those kind of things. Um, this week's third show at the new time slot got its better ratings it, it, it's gone back up a little bit still quite low though but it has gone back up a little bit but but that's not what i want to talk about at this section the story that came out this week is that they are now looking for a new home um i don't know how official th- this news is but all the new sheets were what dirt sheets were talking about this they were saying that they are now searching for a new home which seems like a bit of a, a strange story to break but Let's not forget that it was Dave Meltzer who started to talk about this, which is why a lot of these uh, dirt sheets have, have picked it up. Now, <clears throat> regular listeners will know I'm not a fan of Dave Meltzer, uh, not a fan at all. So, um, but what he said was apparently the USA Network are interested in putting an impact on Tuesday nights to replace SmackDown. Now, bear in mind this is Meltzer, so this was probably from a close close source. Uh, and plans may change, uh, as with all of his stories. They're all from a close source, and everything changes. Usually, by the end of his sentence, they change the plans. Um, so, Ro, do you think this is a reality uh, with regards to the USA uh, kind of revelation, USA Network revelation? And B, do you think it would be a good move? I would be surprised. I don't think it's true, only because the thing you have to look at, and you know, obviously, it's a negative. You got to point out, but. This is, would be the fourth station that Impact's moving on. And you would think a network like USA 
who is it, a lot of home that networks a lot of people get it in their homes you know with their cable provider obviously you have to think they would look you know do their due diligence to look at the history and wonder you know what's happened and transpired over the years i mean stemming back from the spike days and you know you see at least now knocking on wood it seems like we got it you know some stability within the company now but with all the changes and and it seems like every station that they've been on that's happened and i got to believe a station when they you know sign you know offer that contract they're hoping everything's together so i mean i would be surprised i think whatever station they get on it's going to be another kind of unknown station but if they were to get in on usa that would be a good get and i would really hope that you know once again like i say it seems like they have everything together but i'd really hope they have all their stuff in order yeah absolutely um you know if they could get onto the usa network i mean i, I don't know the size of networks over there but obviously if smackdown's on there then there's a good chance that you know they can start to build their viewership again uh if, if they do get onto the usa network and and i think that would be an amazing move uh, do i believe it no not at all unfortunately I, I would love to say it's true but i just can't see it myself you know if if they're not willing to, to put some money up to to try and get uh, smackdown to stay on there that then uh, i think it's unlikely the other thing i want to ask you Ro, because you know more about this th than me but am i right in thinking that raw will still be on the usa network is that right yes they but they air they come on monday so it, yeah yeah that, i know that i know that. but i'm just thinking w would that be kind of an infringement on the the wwe contract if w would what do you reckon they'd be allowed to air another wrestling promotion or do you think that wwe would either take the hump they would or, or they would basically say well okay we're going to pull raw and put it elsewhere then no, well, that ain't, that's not happening. I, I don't think they would be, you know, take it off USA. I think, I don't know. You know, it's interesting. I would say if they're going to be okay with it, they're going to want Impact to air on a day that either not a lot of people are watching TV or they're going to want it at a slot. Once again, they don't want it where they feel they're going to lose view, you know, viewers from their show and they're going to want to move over and watch Impact because... You, you now see on the uh, internet boards, it seems like the common theme nowadays is to go run and bitch about how terrible it is, yet people still watch, but that's here nor there. So I would think if they feel like Impact was starting to take away some of their viewers, maybe. But yeah, I I um I don't think they would have too much of a problem with it. I mean, we see now that there's, they have some sort of a minimal working relationship. So I don't think they see them as as a threat anymore. You know, so I don't think it, I don't think it'd be a problem. Well, loungers, let us know what you think below. Uh, just put in the comments below. Do you think we'll see them on the USA Network? Do you think the fact that WWE is still on the USA Network with Raw would be uh, a deal breaker for any any possible uh, link up? And uh, would you would you like to see him there, or, or do you just think this is once again Meltzer talking out of his ass? Anyway, um, moving on to the main story. We're halfway through this week's show. Uh, we're trying to keep these to 30 minutes each week. And uh, yeah, the main story that I want to talk about this week, and this is the one that we really want to hear your comments. Not that we don't want to hear your comments on the other bits. Of course we do. But the, the story that I really want to talk about this week, and, and it's it's not much of a story. It's an interview that, that Eli Drake did with uh, Alicia Atout on uh, Alicia's YouTube channel, Ambi, uh, for anyone who uh, doesn't follow her or hasn't seen it. So if you go on there, there's, there's a great interview with Eli Drake. But there was there was one thing in particular that came out of the interview that I want to talk about because it's something that's close to my heart. And it's something that I absolutely 100% agree with Eli Drake. So um, I'm going to, uh, well, I, I'm going to read you what the quotes were from, from the, the, the actual interview. And to, to paraphrase Eli Drake, let me talk to you. So... This is what he said. Um, basically, he was asked by Alicia to say what his least favorite wrestling move was in wrestling. And uh, he quickly answered, kicks to the head. He was then asked about what he likes and dislikes. Well, sorry, Drake asked a tout what she likes and dislikes in wrestling as well. And she said she likes flippy stuff. Now, I personally don't like flippy stuff uh you know I, I've, I've always said i'm more narrative driven as opposed to wrestling written but but let, let me go into what drake immediately said after she said flippy stuff he said i hate that stuff 
that's made me start hating the business. By the way, that's that's not a good thing if Eli's hating the business because we don't want to see him leave. So that's where we start hating the business. I'll be honest. The business that I fell in love with was big, strong, masculine men who looked like they were fighting. They had, they all had characters and they all could. Even the worst promo guys were good. Now, holy shit. Good luck to anybody being able to handle a microphone. It's bad. But everybody relies on goddamn flips and Cirque du Soleil spots. He then continued, let's say somebody who hasn't checked in since 2001. Let's say that they decide, you know what? I haven't watched wrestling in a while. I'm going to check in. They're going to turn on today's product and go, what the fuck is this? The casual audience was never really turned on by crazy moves. They were turned on by crazy characters. That's why the big swell happened in the late 90s. It's moments. This whole business is telling a story. It's characters. It's all of that. It's so stupid, and I'll tell you why. Oh, the business has evolved. Evolved to what? Has my head evolved? Because if you kick me in the head enough times, I'm not getting up. We're all killing our own credibility, and I know what that's going to sound like. Fuck old timer, whatever the fuck bullshit, but it's true because now you guys... Got, so you got guys going out there in the very first match, kick each other in the head over and over again. Guys kicking out at two and seven eights over and over again. What you got left down the line? And where are we later in the show? Somebody is going to have to shoot somebody or stab somebody to get a reaction at that point. One of the best lines I heard, I don't know if it was Jim Cornette or who, but the people used to think it was real and all the, safe, all the workers were safe, not hurting each other. Now that people know it's fake, which is fine. People know TV is fake. But we're killing ourselves trying to prove to them that it's not. We're working ourselves. We're all getting injured at a higher rate, and it's stupid. And that bothers me about the business. So that's the first time I've read that to you, Ro. I don't know if you if you heard the interview or you read that before, but what do you make of that? Oh, wow. I mean, a lot of that, um, I mean, he makes a good point. And I think it comes to show you the different eras, uh, even us fans. Like, I think a lot of times people who we'll say right now, probably late 20s, 30s and up, they probably can relate, relate to what he's talking about because just him saying that, you know, you think about the early thousands or late 90s where you had the WWF then and WCW and ECW and it was a different product to what we see nowadays. And, you know, he's, he's right. He makes some good points. I think what has happened over the years is a combination of three things. I think the one thing is you th you think about, I want to say ranging from 2002 to leading up to now, you see a lot of uh, deaths, you know, a lot of uh, wrestlers dying prematurely. So I think that's kind of one thing where, you know, people started trying to take care of their body and probably, uh, you know, try to work somewhat safer, which would have make sense doing all the dives. Two, you see a lot of people gravitating more to wrestlers who they can relate to. Like now, if you're this big, strong, you know, well-shaped uh, wrestler, it's frowned upon. Whereas, you know, someone who's pasty and, you know, looks like somebody who could work at a Target, you know, that they get praised. And then finally, everything just seems so spot heavy. And I think what with that is... You know, before it was always, OK, that was just tailored to the cruiser weights or, you know, guys of lighter stature. And I think bigger guys wanted to show, hey, we can move, too. So then that expanded some. But then it just became, you know, just a thing like a lot of things now is just are really spot heavy. And uh, it, a lot of moves, and I, I know uh, many wrestlers have talked about this, where a lot of moves have been devalued. I mean, I know a lot of people, they get on the DDT that they, they, they said really that should be a finish i mean i think you know nowadays that i mean obviously is a transition move but you look at the super kick or hell i even bring up an impact and it's one kind of thing that annoys me they've devalued the cutter like i've never seen before i mean i remember watching diamond dallas page or hell even you know years back randy orton hitting the rko and I'm like that was it where now the cutter now is just eh, whatever or the death valley drivers whatever so a lot of stuff has been devalued um, but and it's not even a cutter these days. It's a springboard cutter, over the top rope cutter. <laughs> They're cutting everywhere, everyone, aren't they? So yeah. it, it's crazy. Yeah. So it's just you know I, I look at it just from two fronts. I mean, wrestling does evolve, but I think a lot of the things while it's evolved they've taken away a lot of the magic and you know finally i'll say this uh, another combination between and i don't know if you remember but i remember in early thousands they used to have these little shows where it'd be this hidden guy and he would be telling all the secrets in wrestling like as far as i guess they have a mic underneath the ring or spots and everything and then outside of that you know everybody wants to be an insider now 
I mean, we, you know, people want to know what's going on ahead before it even, you know, comes into fruition. So I just think it's a lot of things, things like that. So he makes some great points, though. Absolutely. And, and just very quickly, if you do want to go and listen to it, as I said, go over to Ambi, which is Alicia Taupe's A-M-B-Y, um, her YouTube channel, and, and have a listen to it. And if you do go over there and listen to it, make sure you put in the comments, the Adam and Rose show on the Impact Lounge brought me here. Uh, we always like a shout out on other places. Uh, but yeah, ju just just my views on it. I, I, can't, I can't think of him being able to even have taken his time to actually write a comment, you know, uh, so like a statement you know, before being asked that question, I don't think he could have articulated it any better. My feelings. It's absolutely right. I, I don't think back to when I watch wrestling to think of, man, that was a great match I just watched. I, I don't, you know, moves are incidental. And, and, and the fact, you know, I remember the characters. I remember the storylines. I don't remember the actual matches. And at, at the moment, and, Impact are absolutely guilty of this as well. How many times have we watched a show and you know done a done a review and you listen to to, to Trent and Kyle now as well and they'll say that was a, a pay per view match on the show. Now I'm not saying that they should go out there and stink up the place. I mean that that's what uh, Ali's there for. Um, they should go out there and stink up the place of a match, but they shouldn't be, you know absolutely going hell never you've got to hold something back for the pay-per-view you've got to make people want to go and watch it and say how can they top it whereas if you're putting the bar so high all the time it's impossible to top it and the other thing is you're saying about the cutter you know being overused they don't do enough to protect people's finishers either a finisher should be a finisher if you hit your finisher unless there's some cheating going on such as you know someone putting your foot on the rope or you're too close to the rope or some shenanigans like that or you've leave it too long a finisher should win you the match but when you see people kicking out of finishers two three times I th it's terrible the only time wrestlers should kick out of finishers is on you know at the end of a feud on a big pay-per-view you know where they've been feuding for months and months and months and you know, and they, you've got to hit it twice. To, so that annoys me as well. But, but you know, so so he's absolutely right. You know, people are going out there and they're, and they're just doing stupid things, you know, to get over. And you don't need to do that. Eli Drake is 100% right in my mind. And that leads me on to, you know, obviously, which is why I used to like the Vince Russo booking, because it was never about the car uh, the the wrestling it was always about storyline so so yeah I I'll come back to you in a second row but what I want to hear from the listeners specifically these days is what kind of wrestling do you like you know do you like the flippy shit like Alicia does do you like the Kenny Omega matches now don't get me wrong I haven't watched many Kenny Omega matches and maybe it's a bit unfair me saying that but do you like that type of, of wrestling you know where they're going at it for 20 30 minutes putting on a technical masterclass or do you much prefer things like you know Think of it, the final deletion or even feuds like um, LAX. Think of me that wrestling was great, but LAX OGs, that was all story driven. That Everyone was saying about what a great feud this was. Same with OVE versus LAX, you know, and, and all these things. Brian Cage, you know, they're doing a lot of kicks to the heads and those kind of things, but it's story driven. And, and that's where I think wrestling has moved away from. And, and that's more of a, a thing at indie wrestling, to be fair. So, Ro, any, any final thoughts on that? Yeah, just to add on that, um, and I was talking offline with Keith from Clock Cleaners. Shout out to Clock Cleaners as well as some other pods. <laughs> I'm doing a brief shout out, uh, Six Sides and uh, some other ones, um, always talking good news impact-wise. But we were, when I was talking with Keith, we were talking about it with, with impact, what they do sometimes. They'll, they'll throw these matches together, nothing behind it. And you can only do that so much. And... I feel like what they'll do in a prime example, you think about when uh, the Lucha Brothers and OVE were feuding, how many different iterations will we get from it? And they would just throw it together, like just the randomness. There was no story, no build. And I think that's what we get nowadays. But I think, too, some people like that. So I think... You know, the key thing is while we know wrestling's evolved, give us a good, you know, give us a good blend. You got some of the newer fans that might like that, but still, you know, you don't want to forget the older fans that like the traditional, you know, story build and, you know, feuds and leading up to et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just, just to finish that, by the way, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have these kind of matches. What I'm saying is that, you know, this stuff should be safe for the pay-per-view. 
if you're going to do something, save it for a pay per view. You didn't see Shane McMahon jumping off, uh, you know, the Titan Tron on, on on Raw, did you? You know, you, when you think back, you didn't see all these things happening when you know these big spots. So save them for for the important stuff. Don't do it on a normal episode of Impact week in week out, or Raw, or SmackDown, or I don't even know what Ring of Honor show's called. But yeah, so 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 that's really it. That 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 was it, and. We really want to hear your thoughts on that. And I'm going to hand over to Ro in a second to, to, to get his final kind of comments and what he wants to talk about this week. But please, loungers, engage with us. We love it. You know, we don't do this because we like hearing the sound of our own voices, although I have heard that Ro does listen to it about 20 times each week, um, the playback. But we want to hear your voices. And I don't mean physically. We want to see what your thoughts are. Put them down in writing. Put them on the YouTube comments. Right, Ro, what have you got for us to finish off with this week? I'm just a question for you listeners. Now we've seen Johnny Impact as Impact World Champion successfully defended his title twice. What are your initial thoughts of his reign? I know it's really early, relatively early, I should say. We're closing on a month, but what do you like? What don't you like? Me personally, I think he's doing a fantastic job as champion. I'm happy they finally pulled the trigger and finally give you know given us a chance to see if he's able to be you know, credible champion. And I think so far so good. I will say, and I know I've seen this, um, I, I want to say it was a whoopsie had pointed this out to you, uh, talking about with the starship pain. I think he was talking about as far as it looked like it hurt. I would like to see him use an alternative finisher now that he's champion only because I feel like that's one of these moves. And I used to always have this criticism with Jeff Hardy doing the Swanton. I don't see those high flying moves, so, you know, moves like that. I mean, I think when you're doing a splash or something, maybe it's a little bit different, but I don't, it's hard for me to buy in those type of moves, defeating larger opponents. And so I'm, I'm saying maybe, I mean, I don't know what other moves he does. I mean, I know he does the uh, moonlight drive, but he uses that just as a, a regular move now. But I mean, I don't, and I don't know if he'd be able to pull off the Spanish fly on a larger wrestler but i'd like to see him have another move that looks like it would hurt somebody compared to the starship pain but overall i've enjoyed him as champion i'd also and it's not just johnny impact i'd also like to see every wrestler have a submission finisher as well um that's something that we don't see him do but austin aries you think about him you know he has he had uh, the last chancery uh, as well as the the brain bust or the gut bust or whatever it's called, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, it would be it would be good if he he had a finishing move of some sort. You know, even Eddie Edwards has um, uh, the, the boss, the one legged Boston Crab or whatever it's called. That was the quick trivia question I should know. Um, so so I'd like to see Johnny Impact get a, a, a submission move with regards to his reign. I think it's been excellent so far. I think he's been a great champion. He, he's improved in my eyes, not wrestling wise. He's always been good, but his matches have been excellent so far. The the only criticism, and it's not of Johnny Impact, is but that match should have finished clean the other day on Impact. And I know we're trying to get away from talking about what happened on the recent Impact, but he shouldn't be beating Killer Cross in his in his first match. Uh, the first match they have. If he wins, it should have been by DQ or Killer Cross could have won by DQ or there should have been some interference or something or count out. Shouldn't have been a clean finish. But anyway, that's that's a little gripe. Yeah, as Rose said, let's hear your comments below. Um, anything else before we finish up? Uh, that's all. Um, once again, like I always say, thanks for you guys tuning in and uh, continue to leave comments and questions. Yep. So, so just to recap on this week's show, we'll do a quick recap before we finish. Make sure you are tuning into the channel. Follow Ro and I uh, on Twitter and let's get Billy Corgan on. Get Billy on as the hashtag. And uh, the questions this week that we really wanted you to, to answer was uh, ratings and basically the, the network channel. What do you think about that? What do you think of Austin Aries trolling the internet? And most importantly, what do you think about Eli Drake's comments? Do you agree with him that flippy shit should be banned from wrestling and we should get back to big dudes beating the shit out of each other and uh, some good storylines? Uh, so that's it from Ro and myself. Ciao.